Hi, this is Chris Kovach, Regional Solutions Consultant for Toby Dynavox in Northeastern Florida and Southern Georgia. Today, I'm going to attempt to answer a question that was just posed by a local family, and they are running into some issues in allowing their child to play Look to Learn. The issue that they're running into is they launch the program like I have here, they get into an activity, but then there's no eye tracking. They can see that she's looking at the device or, and uh, they can't move the mouse cursor. This is a fairly common um, step that gets overlooked. And I wanted to try and help answer that and supply some background information and steps for you guys in case you're running into something similar. Whenever you launch something like Look to Learn or Look to Read, those programs do not inherently have eye tracking already turned on or a way to manipulate the screen with your eyes. So that's the portion that's missing in this, per in this particular scenario. So what we're going to utilize is TD Snap as our speech software, because that's what they're using. We're gonna utilize Communicator 5 in part to simply give that eye tracking control back to the patient outside of the speech environment. And then we're going to be utilizing Look to Learn. So if this is the scenario, we have Look to Learn, we know it's running, but we can't get the eye tracking to work. I'm gonna walk you through that right now. So let's close out of Look to Learn completely. And I'm gonna open up my TD Snap uh, homepage. And in this case, I'm running in supported navigation, meaning that I have less than a three by three grid selected within the TD Snap layout. Uh, so your home screen may look different. The steps that we're gonna follow are gonna be the exact same no matter what. You can do these steps on any button that you choose to within the system. So it does not have to be right where I'm going to place this in my system. Uh, you have complete flexibility with that. But what we're going to do today is we're going to modify this gray button in the bottom right hand corner to allow us to tell the system that we want TD Snap to launch out Look to Learn and launch out Communicator 5. And then I'm going to show you how to make the changes in Communicator 5 so that we get the result that we're looking for. So first step is to click on our settings gear and pencil in the upper right hand corner and we're going to open up edit mode so now we have our blue bar at the top and our options at the bottom at this point it's simply faster to select this button and use the trash can on the right hand side to delete it then i'll use the plus sign to create just a fresh blank button now whenever you create a fresh button the system automatically applies a speak or insert into the message window function because most of the time that's what we need our buttons to do this is not one of those scenarios so I'm gonna use the trash can and I'm gonna confirm that I no longer want that action by hitting the red delete button. If I scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that there is an add action button. We're gonna select this and we're going to use this launch application uh, favorite. If it's not a favorite on your particular setup, please feel free to scroll down through. You will see all the different tools and features broken down by their category. So navigation, speaking, board maker, behavior supports, all those things will be there. You just have to look for and locate the launch application uh, tool. So I'm gonna select launch application. And just because it's easier, I'm going to select communicator five first. It really makes no difference though. So I want the system to launch out communicator five. So when I go back to my content, I'll see that that first add action for launching an application is now complete. It's going to launch communicator five but I want it to do a second application. I want it to launch Look to Learn as well. So I'm gonna add another action. I'm gonna again choose Launch Application, but this time, since it's not one of these nice clean pre-sorted icons for me, I have to go browse for the file or the application. So I'm gonna use that little browse application or file link, and it's gonna pull up my file manager. In this case, I know I need to go to the C drive because that's where all of my files live on a computer in the Windows environment. Uh, and I'm going to use either my program files or my program 86 files, depending on the program I'm typically trying to find. For me, that tends to be look to learn or look to read. Uh, both of those, I believe, are in program files. So I'm going to double click that. And then I'm going to look through my file folders. And if I get down to my S's, I'm going to start to see sensory software and Smartbox. Now, Smartbox is the company that makes both Look to Read and Look to Learn, but it's a little confusing because those files don't all live within that Smartbox folder like you would think. If you click into Smartbox, you'll see you have your Look to Read files, and that's great if that's what you're trying to get, but in this case, we're looking for Look to Learn. So I'm going to come back and go into my sensory software folder, and there's my Look to Learn files. I'm going to double click Look to Learn, and then once I'm in that look to learn file, I need to go find 
the one that shows me the icon, right? That little yellow box with the two eyeballs and is listed as an application. That's the file we want. So I'm gonna click on that and click open. And now you'll see right next to the browse for application or file, the system is telling us it's also going to launch the look to learn.exe or the executable file. And that's exactly what we want. Now, you don't have to make this button pretty, so to speak, or, uh, but you do wanna make it clear what this button is going to do. So this launch look to learn.exe and the communicator five logo don't really do a great job of that. So what I've done is already gone out and just done a very quick Google image search for look to learn, right? I want this to be very clear to the individual what program we're gonna be launching if they click on this button. So in that case, since I don't want this button to speak anything, I really just wanna have a nice symbol on here so they know it's gonna happen when they click on it. Uh, I'm gonna go by clicking on my file, I'm sorry, on my camera, I can go through my files on my photo library. Now I know because I saved my photo in the pictures folder, I'm just gonna go to my pictures folder. If you save it to your desktop or to another file folder, you just have to go locate it. And I happened to download a new one today called look to learn logo and it was on yellow. So if I click on that file and click open, it's going to apply that picture just like applying any other picture to our button. Now that gives the student a very clear indication of what this button is going to do. So we can click done. Our programming on the TD snap side is pretty much complete. So I'm gonna minimize this because we're not done completely with our programming yet. I wanna open up Communicator 5. So I've already had this running in my toolbar, but if you open Communicator 5, it does not matter what your homepage currently looks like. So if yours is different, or if you have to go through the walkthrough and because you've never used this program before, don't worry about it. Just go through the walkthrough, complete the steps, um, you can choose any of the three categories as far as getting started uh, when you get presented with that option. You're ultimately going to end up on a page that looks something like this. You're going to have these tiles that may be more pediatric looking. It may be more adult looking like what I have here. What you want to do is tap and hold on the screen if you're using an I-13 or an I-16, and it's going to bring up this menu. Tap, I'm sorry, you tap and hold and then release. And upon the release, it brings up this quick menu guide. We want to click on edit homepage. Now, this is going to show you anything that's on your page, and that really doesn't matter because we're only going to be asking Communicator 5 to do one thing, and that's going to be launching the mouse functionality out for us to use. So what we want to do is click the plus sign at the top called add page set. This particular tool does live in the emerging communication section, so click emerging communication. And on the left hand side, click on other applications. Now you will see a few different things in here that look like they might work and some of them will. Uh, the main two that I'm gonna talk about today are gonna to be look to learn and gaze point for snap. And we're really not gonna talk about look to learn much. I just wanted to call it out because that is the program we're trying to run. If you were to launch look to learn and add this from your homepage right now, what we did and what we will continue to do uh, through the rest of this video is tell TD Snap to control or allow Communi Communicator 5 to turn on the mouse functionality for look to learn If you were to only use this button, it will only ever give you the mouse cursor. That's all you will ever see. The reason I like to start with gaze point for Snap is because it gives us a, a little bit more control over if we see the mouse cursor or not, if we want to turn on single clicking or not, uh, if we want to pause the eye tracker or not. We just have a little bit more power when it comes to this. And when we start to look at things like other websites, uh, Starfall, ABC, um, you know, sites that we might use educationally, that ability to have that click functionality or to see or turn off that mouse cursor might be extremely valuable. And at that point, you're already comfortable using that piece of software. Uh, so I tend to stick with this one. My own personal preference, please feel free to explore on your own though. So I'm gonna choose gaze point for snap. I'm gonna add that to my homepage. I'm gonna click my X to see what my homepage looks like. It will always add gaze point for snap to the very end. And because we're not using communicator five for anything else in this scenario, I'm going to click on gaze point for snap and I'm going to use set up as startup page or set as startup page. And I'm gonna confirm that. So now anytime communicator five loads, it's going to start like this in this upper right-hand corner. So we're gonna start gaze point. And now when we click that, 
it essentially turns it on and we can choose whether or not we want to pause or unpause the mouse cursor. So if we're prompting or modeling for something, we can kind of control that a little bit more. Uh, we can hide the mouse cursor if it's a distraction. And if we want to, we can start to click or turn on the click functionality. So I'm going to actually exit all the way out of communicator to shut it all down and go back into my snap uh, TD snap folder or TD snap program. And I want to check and just make sure this is working. So if it does what it's supposed to, we have told it that when we click on this look to learn button, it should minimize TD snap. It should launch look to learn. It should launch communicator five and it should launch communicator five in that uh, gaze point for snap setup that I showed you with that little gray box. Uh, at that point, we should be able to change our options if we want to turn clicking on or off and then essentially start playing a game. So let's see if this works. I'm going to uh, actually see if I can throw a curveball here. I'm going to set this up to do eye gaze on my device and I want to see if I can do this all with my eyes. That's kind of one of the important things I want to accomplish with this. All right, so if I stop using my mouse, I'm now on my eyes. All right, I click look to learn. It minimized as expected. It's launching communicator, which could take some time. Don't, uh, don't be in too much of a rush with communicator. It is a big program. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds to load completely. All right, look to learns in the background, start gaze points up there. I can start it. All right, and there we go. Without having to touch the screen or use my mouse, I now have eye gaze control. Now, I know most children are not gonna be able to do what we just did, but I wanted to make sure that it worked. So as those kids grow and get used to those functions and skills, they can start to take those steps on their own. Uh, now, as the adult, what you may do is come up here and say, okay, yep, I do not want the clicking turned on. I do want you to see the mouse cursor, so that's all good. I would highly recommend minimizing this at this point, because if you don't, if I uncover my eye tracker again and stop using my mouse, the user does have access to get up into that setting and essentially change them. And if we don't want to do that, or if we're not paying attention and they happen to change the settings or pause themselves, we may not know, and it may be coming, uh, may become a point of frustration. So whenever you're done with your settings, just click the minimize button and get that out of the way for the user. And now they have control with their eyes to simply move the mouse, just as we wanted. You will have to physically touch the screen and guide them into the activity. So in this case, I'm just going to guide into one of the most popular sensory activities, which is custard pies. And I'm going to get everything started for them. Now, when they're in custard pies, there we go. Now, pies, I'm navigating, I'm looking around the screen to determine, you know, is this working? Am I able to hit four quadrants? Am I able to hit the center? Uh, and it's, it's working as expected. So that's exactly what we want. Now, You'll notice I can't close anything, right? I can get up to this X, but I can't shut it down. That's because we haven't turned it on. Uh, if we wanted to do that in the future, or if you wanted to allow um, the student to start to select their own games, go and turn on your click function. Once it's on, make sure you hit that minimize again. I think I just paused myself with my eyes, yep. All right, so make sure you hit minimize. Now, if I stop touching, You'll see as I wait on something, I'm going to either get a red clock or in my case, a red shrinking dot that goes down towards the center. So if I hold it, I've now clicked on that with my eyes. So this is a great way to start introducing those uh, as far as beginning navigation activities that we may want to do with our eyes. Um, Netflix, YouTube, things like that. Um, those are great ways to start to introduce those single click functions that we have accessible to us through this gaze point for snap. Now, whenever you're done uh, completely playing the game or you wanna get back to the speech software or the student wants to get back to the speech software, click that exit to snap button and it'll automatically take us right back in and we're right into our speech. And when we wanna go back, you simply have to get to your home and look at the button and launch it out again. I hope this helps guys. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, if you run into any technical issues, you can reach us at 1-800-344-1778 and have a wonderful day.